This disease came up uh, uh, more or less uh, four years ago and uh, in, in uh, our area, that is to say the provinces of Rome and Latina, where, is, uh, where are the devoted to this cultivation uh, almost 8,000 uh, uh, hectares, it has had really panic, especially at the beginning, because the farmers uh, were not uh, expected to, de to deal with uh, such uh, a destructive uh, pathogen. Uh, from them, uh, we have some progress in, in knowledge of the, the bacterium in, uh, in several aspects, uh, including also uh, the genome. Uh, with, with Toro, we are uh, cooperating in, in trying to uh, approach the biofilm uh, communication. And this is also is another important aspect that is currently unknown, uh, were unknown, at least, for, the, for this pathogen. So <clears throat> let, let's move. And uh, this uh, picture, apart from the, the famous uh, uh, name of the panther, pay attention to the uh, title, potato eaters, and to the years, 1865. This picture. Um, will help uh, to understand why the disease uh, in some areas of the world are, are, are still very in, uh, important. Uh, something to, uh, about uh, genome sequencing, uh, as some in, in, in introductory concept about uh, bacterial world, just to say how this uh, uh, microorganism uh, um, can colonize uh, different areas uh, of the world. This is a picture uh, showing how many different phylotypes you can obtain just by sequencing, in this case, uh, human gastrointestinal tract. You see, and roughly uh, 400 different bacteria phylotypes. This is coastal bacterioplankton. One sample, more than 1,000 phylotypes. Marine ecosystems, a lot of uh, pristine soils in uh, 10 grams of pristine soil, you can find even uh, almost 9 million of bacteria species. And this uh, known, this arrow, is uh, stating that uh, the currently the av available data concerning the, the microbial genome sequence is uh, more or less less than uh, 1,000 genomes. So we are really still at the beginning uh, of um, this area. Uh, this part uh, highlights uh, the, the horizontal gene transfer that is a, a phenomenon that is currently very important for uh, uh, understanding how bacteria colonize the uh, world. Pseudomonas is, a, is a, a very versatile uh, bacterial genus that is colonizing uh, different uh, uh, um, environments from insect to plant interaction, host defenses, antibiotics production, is involved in the microbial competition as biocontrol agent. He uh, produce uh, uh, secondary metabolites. Uh, so according to your per perspective, you find pseudomonas involved in different environments. Our, our field is uh, plant disease. Uh, and of course, biofilm is, uh, is, is important. And also some pathogen, like pseudomonas aeruginosa, and uh, Mendocina has important human pathogens, mainly for their uh, antibiotic resistance behavior. This is some uh, important concept to, to have in mind, is uh, what we are looking at now and uh, uh, mm, acquiring as, as a general knowledge when we are sequencing, you find a core genome and the pan genome. Core genome is the basic genome. We will see what the core genome uh, code for. And the pan genome. Uh, there are different pseudomonas uh, uh, species sequenced. You see that as soon you enlarge the knowledge of genome sequences, the, uh, the core genome decreases and the pan genome increases. What does this mean? It means that the bacteria are not only core genomes, coding for DNA replication, cell wall formation, but mainly they are formed for uh, still unknown genes that code for important uh, uh, facet of their lifestyle. In fact, if you look at the uh, bacterial genome, uh, you find it very uh, plasticity. He can maintain through uh, or gain and loss uh, 
uh, dozen or hundreds of genes. This is a sort of uh, tree of life uh, or some uh, um, sequenced bacterial uh, sp species and uh, different uh, genera. And you find that the an ancestral genes are uh, the uh, white lines. The, the yellow and the, and the red lines account for the novel genetic traits that each phylotype has acquired from different bacterial species. And in Pseudomonas, as example, you see also it's very important, this blue part, that means these are the amount of genes that are still in, in the bacterial genome that have been acquired from the ex external part. So this uh, flux of communication between and among different bacteria, not only uh, members of the same species, but different genera is a, is a very important uh, concept to have in mind. So to be um, clear, core genomes uh, is involved, uh, is, 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 is in the chromosome and in the large plasmid and code for cell wall, primary metabolic pathways, ribosome and DNA replication. So really the most important uh, part concerning uh, the replication and maintenance of the species. But the flexible that is present in plasmid and this other part of the genomes code for uh, other very important uh, traits that uh, concerning plant pathogens and human pathogens are related to pathogenicity, especially in the xenomic islands, but also in plasmid and prof Sorry, what happened? Yeah. Ah, okay. Another concept to have in mind is, are the, is the genomic hotspot. These are uh, uh, completely sequenced uh, uh, genomes of uh, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and you see there are relationships. The, the first uh, uh, six circles uh, are related to Pseudomonas aeruginosa, other are different uh, Pseudomonas. By the way, plant pathogenic Pseudomonas are these three, Pseudomonas syringe. And you find that, generally speaking, the homology of the, sequen of the sequences are quite uh, um, with high percentage. But in some cases, you have these hot spots. It means that you, you don't find genetic relationships with any other bacterial genus and genera. This means that, uh, in this case, some uh, external genomic traits has been uh, included into, into the genome. That is playing, of course, important uh, roles. When you combine uh, and uh, um, uh, study the, the gene homology of uh, entirely uh, the whole gen gen genome, you can find different uh, situations of uh, strains belonging to the same genus, Brenneria um, aphidicola and aphidicola. These are two different strains with perfect homology. So it means that uh, these two strains belonging to the same species are lined perfectly to the same uh, sense concerning their genome. But you can uh, also a, a different situation for Vibrio cholera and Vibrio para hemolyticus. You find different disposition of the alignment of genes. This means that the arrangement of the genes of these species are different, even though they belong to the same genera. You see, you also in the, in the Bruxella, Bronchiseptica, you, you have a, a scattered uh, uh, distribution of genes. This means that their genome is uh, completely different. The genes are arranged in different uh, uh, forms. Okay, let's uh, talk about uh, uh, our Pseudomonas syringe, Pathoratinidae. As we say, it is considered a re-emerging pandemic uh, pathogen. W what are the definition of, uh, for a re-emerging uh, uh, pathogen? You can see here, here four main uh, uh, traits. It has enlarged its host plants, geographical expansion and danger. It shows different mechanisms of pathogenicity and virulence. It has recently evolved, and it has been reported for the first time in other areas of cultivation. Pseudomonas syringia tinidia uh, fulfills all of these uh, main rules. This is the current distribution in the world 
uh, you see that the largest uh, kiwi fruit production, production area like Italy and New Zealand are interested uh, of, uh, from this pathogen, but also in Chile and in other important countries like France, Spain, Portugal, and recently Turkey. And of course, in China, that, by the way, is the uh, country of origin of kiwi fruit. Actinidia species originate from China and South Korea. So it is pandemic because uh, you don't find any other important area of kiwi fruit, uh, kiwi fruit cultivation in the, in, the, in, the, in the world. So this pathogen in few years reached all the main growing areas of kiwi fruit. So we, now we start to talk about the, um, our work. When you start the genome sequences, you have to select the strains. It seems apparently a secondary task, but it's not. You have to include at the beginning uh, the type strains, and uh, our type strains uh, is, uh, isolate, was isolated in Japan uh, roughly 30 years ago from Actinidia deliciosa. And uh, we selected uh, two strains isolated in Italy 20 years ago from this leaf. And uh, four years ago, another strain, I2, two because uh, it's new, from this leaf. So you, you really find the, the, the leaf from where we isolated the, the pathogen. This is uh, just an example uh, how destructive is, uh, is this pathogen. During winter time, you find the most impressive uh, symptoms. So it's capable to degrade the, the woody tissue in, in a few months, even though, even though it's also able to survive and colonize uh, the leaf. So this is uh, a comparison uh, using the MAUV software of the alignment of, uh, of the different genome. Of course, you have to compare our genomes uh, with uh, um, a reference strains. This is a, a strain uh, from tomato. It's a Pseudomonas syringe pathovar tomato that was uh, totally sequenced. And uh, the different colors, this like uh, candies, means different part of the genomes that are, um, how do you say, present the same hom homology in the, in the contig. Different colors means are different uh, uh, mm, areas of the genome. And uh, the more the color is plenty, the more the homology is high. You see this uh, is uh, quite similar. These are some spots that are different. Anyway, this is the first step. You have to uh, go into details, uh, pay attention to different set of genes to point out uh, similarity or differences uh, among the genomes. The other view of the genomes are the, the clustering of uh, uh, orthologous genes, that is to say the proteins. There are different uh, categories of proteins and you have to uh, select and put in the right place uh, the different proteins. And this, are, this gives you another perspective of the gene, uh, genome sequencing. These are um, a panel uh, trying to highlight uh, the similarity and differences between uh, the two population of Pseudomonas syringe pathovaratinidia, the old one that caused uh, important uh, damages in Japan, but not in Italy, even though they are very similar genetically, and the second one, that is the current pandemic situation and um, population spread uh, all over the world. So this is the old one in Japan and in Italy 20 years ago. These are the main uh, um, genes that uh, we highlight in terms of uh, pathogenicity, but also uh, fitness in the environment. Environment in this case means the plant. So you can find, uh, um, for example, this plasmid, relatively small, 50 uh, kb. And uh, of course, you have, of course, you have this uh, facelotoxin, that is a toxin that enables the bacteria to cause uh, chlorosis, but you have also uh, important uh, um, enzymes related to catechol catabolism and protocatechol degradation. I just put these two set of genes just to uh, refer to the initial 
uh, figure, image showing you how destructive is the bacterium for the wooded tissue. And uh, these are uh, enzyme, enzymes involved uh, in the uh, resistance of the plant uh, in the reactive oxygen systems. And these are important, copper resistance, antibiotic resistance. And this category also is very important. Siderophorols are uh, uh, molecules that uh, capture the iron. And this uh, uh, member of siderophore are among the most, uh, uh, I can say, the most exacting for, uh, for, the, for the iron. It means that with this kind of siderophores, all the iron that is uh, possible to find in the plant can kept and captured by this pathogen. So probably it competes uh, in, in the environment through these uh, uh, categories of, of gene. Of course, it, means, it misses here uh, the biofilm uh, uh, molecules because we still are investigating together with Vittorio and his uh, collaborator. Also, the effectors are important. You will see that there are differences between these two populations. This is the new one, the current pandemic population. You see that he, he loses the, um, the facilotoxin gene cluster, but this remains and maybe is even more, more virulent as well. So these toxins are uh, uh, not entirely necessary to promote the disease. If they have this better, but if they don't have these uh, uh, phytotoxins, they can cause disease as well. What are the main difference? He take these uh, prophages. He had uh, antibiotic and copper resistant genes, uh, but also this lantibiotic. Lantibiotic as antibiotic uh, uh, produced by gram positive uh, bacterium, uh, Streptomyces. Streptomyces, you know, is a, a a, a, a large uh, categories of antibiotic producing uh, microbes. And this new population has evolved uh, this uh, uh, set of genes to face this antibiotic. He has the same siderophores of the, of the previous population, the same uh, uh, enzymes involved in the degradation of the tissue, the same uh, uh, enzymes involved in the reactive oxygen systems, but different uh, effectors we will see. Just very, very, very short this, uh, just, just to say that this pathogen uh, is, a, is, a, is a member of the Pseudomonas syringe complex, complex that uh, you know it's uh, a quite uh, large uh, group of bacteria, all of them related to plants. So it's, it's a genuine member of this uh, of this uh, uh, group. We have the, this is MLST. This is a common techniques just to, to go into detail in the taxonomic relationship, but we just confirm uh, uh, this, this aspect. This is interesting, the variable region and lateral gen transfer. How do you find the lateral gen transfer and variable region in the, in the genome? How you can define? There are special software that enables you to find this kind of region, measure than 10,000 base pair, having different GC content. This is, uh, by definition, a, a, a variable region. Often, in, in the variable region, there are uh, virulence factors. So when you find this uh, uh, variable region, you can talk putatively of lateral gen transfer. This is a, a nice example that enables also to, to see how the bacterial genome is a sort of uh, puzzle. It is not regular. This uh, set of genes are scattered in the genomes uh, apparently without uh, uh, nonsense. They have, they, of course, they have sense for them. But look at this. This is the tomato pathogen. This is the new uh, Pseudomonas atinidia population. They have the same variable genes in two different uh, pathogens, but not, this region is not present in the other two Pseudomonas atinidia uh, genomes. In contrast, the, the three, the three uh, strains of Pseudomonas atinidia as this variable region, all of them, but that is not present in the tomato. Again, the, the, old, uh, the old population have this very large 
variable legend that is not present uh, in the new one and not even in the tomato. So, but this is just to say how these uh, genes uh, go and, and, uh, and went uh, easily. This is, uh, is how to score, how to detect uh, uh, a genomic island. The, you see this is the, the, the core genome, as this, more or less of this uh, uh, GC content, roughly 50. When you find, for example, 40, this is, uh, means that the, the genome has acquired by uh, horizontal genes transfer this part that in this case code for uh, some genes. But I, I repeat, in case of pathogen, I insist on, on this because uh, this uh, variable region in many cases code for important virulence factor. This is probably, this is, oh, we know which are the main mechanism for acquiring uh, external bacterium genome. These are quite classical uh, uh, microbi uh, microbiology through transformation, conjugation, plasmid uh, uh, introduction, and transduction, this is important. We will see transduction when, when a phages, or better a prophage, enter to the bacterial cell wall and go into the frame of the genome. These are different ev evolutionary pathways of a different gene. Uh, this is a bacterial cell wall that is acquired from uh, away a genomic island. What, what, what can, could be this genomic island? Could be a fitness island, and it can give you specialization, or it go through environment. So if, if uh, this island contains genes for uh, enhancing the fitness of the bacterium, you have uh, an environmental adaptation. In case of, uh, of uh, pathogens, you can have a pathogenicity island and parasitism or symbiosis or saprophytic. So there is a continuous, continuous exchanging of these genes that uh, according to the function, they uh, um, help the, the strain to colonize different uh, niche. Virulent, this is the rice, uh, Vittorio. <laughs> uh, also this uh, slide is just, to, this is the genome of rice that you know is one of the plant species that has completely sequenced some, uh, some years ago. And um, you can find here the different uh, um, departments I would say, of, uh, of, uh, of categories of, of protein. In other words, what the genes, what the proteins of, uh, of the RAS are useful for the plants. You see a, a certain percentage for cellular communication, other pro protein, unknown, of course, DNA replication, but play, pay attention to the two most important part of the RAS genome. So the, the genome of the rice code, of course, mainly for metabolism, but in the second place, it's for defense or cell death. In other words, all plants have a large amount of genes that are devoted to combat to fate pathogens. And this is a picture of the evolutionary history. It means that rice, like any other plants, have battle, have fight, in the past with a vast array of pathogen because, because um, the, a large part of the genome is devoted to uh, defense against, against the pathogen. Uh, coming back just because it's interesting, coming back to the facilotoxin, uh, I already said that the new population lose this toxin but is, uh, this uh, gen cluster is a, a classical example in plant pathology, in phytobacteriology, how the same gen cluster can be present solely in two different related uh, uh, plant pathogenic bacteria. In other words, this is a, a classical Japanese paper that pointed out that uh, the facilotoxin is present, of course, in the fase auricola, in the Pseudomonas syringa strains that infect uh, beans, okay? But they found, strangely, 15, um, roughly 20 years ago, that the, the toxin was also present in the actinidia, in, in, the, in, the, in the old actinidia population. We found that the new 
uh, strain, the new pandemic strain, does not have the fazilotoxin. This is uh, the gene cluster. It just loses the tox island. So this is, this is a real example of, of gain and loss uh, uh, of... Uh. In fact, if you pay attention in this case, fazilotoxin inside the chlorotic halos, this is a, in terms of um, pathogenicity uh, jargon, a chlorotic, yellowish area surrounding the necrotic spot, you don't find this... Uh, uh, necrotic, uh, these chlorotic areas in the, in the, in the leaf uh, colonized by the new uh, pathogen. And this is the classical uh, uh, phaseolotoxin effect in the bean leaf. You see the necrosis with uh, very evident chlorotic errors. But this, this is just uh, an example. Effector prophagian plasmids. These are the secretion system in phytopathogenic bacteria uh, there are uh, nowadays uh, uh, six different uh, types. The most common are type 3 and, uh, and, and type 4. Uh, this secretion system enables the bacterial cell to introduce into the cell wall of the plant uh, these effectors. These are small protein that plays a, a very decisive role in, uh, in uh, um, overcoming the plant defense system. Uh, some years ago, uh, we think that uh, it would be enough uh, to have one, two, or maybe three different specific effectors to uh, face uh, to overcome the, um, the plant defense system. Nowadays, it's not more true. There are re repertoire, or, uh, repertoire of a different uh, set of effectors. There are families of effector. There are 40, to, to, from 40 to 60 different uh, effector proteins. The combination of different proteins enables the bacterium to overcome uh, the plant cell uh, defense system and to colonize the plant. And uh, as an example, you find that the type 3 are little syringe you will see better in an uh, electronic microscope uh, picture, that inject, really, passing the cell wall, are injecting the effector. Similar to the type 4 of, for agrobacterium tumefater that, uh, as you know, in, uh, in, uh, in, um, introduce a piece of uh, the vir uh, plasmid that uh, uh, promote the proliferation of the plant cell. So the, the, the secretion system, the, the mechanic, the, the, the physical system are very similar, but the strategy is different. This is a uh, diagrammatic uh, uh, picture of the, of the type 3 secretion system. This is the host membrane, this is the, the syringe, and the release of effector. This is real. You see the difference? This is a flagello. Flagellum is uh, the uh, motility um, organ with which the bacterium uh, move into the environment. By the way, this uh, uh, motility uh, system is very effective. Uh, if, if you like uh, Formula 1, you, you, you should know that uh, the round per minute of a Ferrari uh, engine is similar to the round per minute of uh, a bacterium flagellum, and roughly uh, 18,000 round uh, per minute. So they are very effective in, uh, in moving, also in, in, uh, in jamming uh, system. But uh, this is the pilus. This is a, a um, serology exploiting the gold. Uh, uh, these are gold particles that recognize uh, the pilus uh, with which the bacterium uh, introduce into the plant cell the effectors. These are particles of uh, uh, gold recognizing by uh, antigen uh, antibody reaction the pilus to uh, um, highlight the pilus formation. Okay? And also this is interesting. If you uh, go to the sequences of the, of the effectors, this is the baseline showing the GC content different uh, uh, system, GC in the position three, the total, and this is the codon uh, anti, uh, um, index. 
you find that there are, uh, in the same bacterial strain, part of a factor that are within the uh, JPC content. Probably, in other words, uh, they belong uh, ancestry to the strain, to the strain, but there are also some effectors that are below the GC in each situation. This means that also the effectors can be acquired by lateral gene transfer. This is a, a, just to say that even the effector can be uh, uh, subdivided in families. And you see that uh, this is the core effector system of the two Pseudomonas actinidia population. So, in other words, they have many, the most of the same effector, but again, they have four different uh, specific effectors. These four effectors are found only in the current pandemic population. These other four ones are present only in the other two strains of the old population. If this can induce uh, this uh, uh, higher aggressiveness, we still don't know. But this could be a, a path to, to follow. Prophages. It's very important also put attention uh, to this. Um, this is bat bacterial genome of uh, a species. You see how much percentage of, uh, of the genome is coded for uh, viral or viral putative. It, 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 it's not so low. It's not so low. These, are geno these are phages uh, uh, trying to invade uh, bacterial cells. And again, when you find uh, uh, insertion of uh, prophages and genomic island of another pseudomonas, you find this. All of these are insertion of prophages. So these strains have accepted uh, three, four different prophages that can play a role in, uh, in, uh, uh, in the virulence. Of course, these are temperate uh, phages. In, in, uh, they are in, not in the lytic phase of, of, of the phages. The, the pathogen includes the sequence into the genome and exploit for something. These somethings, uh, I, I repeat, uh, in many times uh, means virulence. Plasmid, maybe you remember, the new uh, <coughs> population has gained this uh, big plasmid, roughly one, uh, 160 kilobase, and lose uh, this. So also plasmid can gain and lose easily. Go a little bit more to the field. Wow, how is possible this sudden uh, a, a pandemic disease everywhere? with uh, so uh, aggressiveness everywhere. So uh, one path to follow is this, the evolution of microbial virulence, the benefit of stress. You see that the plant uh, apoplast, uh, that is the space in between uh, the cell wall, is, uh, you know that um, bacterial, plant pathogenic bacteria, at the beginning of the infection, are not able to go directly into the cell wall. They live for uh, some period, that could be two, three days, seven days. We still don't know exactly in any case. They live uh, in the up plant apoplast. That is uh, the space in between uh, the cell walls. So when the apoplant senses uh, these uh, stresses, low pH, low nutrients, low temperature, it can uh, induce into the bacterial cell a cascade of... Uh, uh, reaction that uh, uh, coding for protein related to the apparatus HRP and to the type 3 protein secretion system. So in case of stress, uh, the bacterial cell wall start to produce uh, these effectors. Okay, so maybe could, this could be a reason why I'm saying this, why I'm insisting. Because uh, in... Um, in our, in our area, in central Italy, in, the, in uh, Rome and province, at that time uh, were cultivated uh, almost 1,000 of yellow kiwi fruit. You maybe know better the green one. The green one is uh, Actinidia deliciosa, is, is a species uh, that is known uh, since about uh, 40 years. It's uh, quite well adapted to our environment. 
but this, this uh, relatively new actinidia kinensis species, the yellow fleshed uh, kiwi fruit, uh, has uh, a, a typical subtropical Chinese origin. In other words, uh, it cannot resist so well to the, to, to the frost. And uh, in Latium is, is a, has a typical Mediterranean climate, uh, temperate winter, but temperate does not mean absence, absolute, absolute absence of frost. Frost events uh, in 10 days can occur two or three times. There are not uh, deep frosts. I mean, uh, minus three, minus seven, minus eight for one or two days. But for a subtropical fruit crops, it's enough uh, to induce a lot of wounds. This wound can or induce the, the, the virulence uh, of an already present pathogen, bacterium inside the plant. And in any case, the frost induces a lot, billions and billions of wounds. In other words, if I have a susceptible crop, a pathogen already present in the area, this stress can induce the wounds that are being colonized from the spreading inoculum of, of the pathogen. Because it's better to underline that the yellow flesh of the kiwi fruits arrive in this area in 2000, 2001. And the first uh, epidemics occur in 2008. And if you go to the weather forecast system uh, from 2000, 2007, 8, you didn't find frost event. But in between uh, 2007, 2008, I will show you, there were early frost in November. So probably this has been the initial uh, stress factor uh, exactly here. This uh, another thing is important is the precipitation from 2007 to 2011. Uh, these are the, um, the, the minimum, uh, the, the, the average temperature. But importantly, the, these two stars represent early and late frost. Early means uh, 4, 5 of November. That if you go in the field, uh, the plants is uh, still uh, living. You have the leaves. Uh, uh, at that time, there were still the fruits, the plants. So here the plants received uh, two days uh, of minus 6 uh, for not uh, many hours for uh, two or three hours, but could be enough to promote the initial uh, stress factor. Another important aspect was the precipitation. This is, you see, the average, the average, the, the real amount that, that uh, uh, is, uh, is uh, in the other case, uh, in between the average precipitation of the area. That is roughly between eight, uh, uh, 850, 90. 900. But uh, in 2008, you find more than uh, 1,200 millimeters. When? Mainly in spring and in autumn. And you see the increasing of uh, infected area that is following this peak. So there is a strict relationship between the frost occurring and initial uh, epidemic of, of, of the disease. And these are the tissue, olive green. The, this is not uh, a, a, how do you say, a shadow effect. These are the real, the color. And if you go, you see here, no symptoms at all. But if you go to isolate the pathogen, you find the pseudomonas syringe in this tissue, two months after the frost event. So coming back to our uh, initial image, what, what, what I'm saying with this, this is uh, uh, just to say that at that time, uh, in, in the Netherlands, but in, in, the, in the North Europe as well, <coughs> the main crop was potato. The, um, the people rely a lot just on one culture, one or two crops. One of these one was potato. Well, what happened in this year? And just, just to say that, um, excuse me. No, I didn't put this. Okay. So potato was spread uh, all over the country, not only in Holland but also in Ireland, 
and uh, in, uh, in, the, in these years came up uh, a, an epidemic of a devastating fungus, Phytophthora, Phytophthora infestans, the late blight uh, pathogen that destroyed completely the, uh, the crop production of, of the potato. So the people start to, to starve, to emigrate, a lot of that uh, people. If, you, if we translate this situation in, in, in our modern months, I just say that in Latin area, but not only there, also in New Zealand or in Chile, there are hectares and hectares and hectares cultivated solely with kiwi fruit. So, in other words, if a pathogen, very aggressive, finds a monoculture, it can colonize effectively most of the plants. And in the case of potato eater, cause the famine. In our case, case a lot of economic losses. But this is one uh, explanation of this uh, rapid uh, uh, spreading of this disease. O origin of the pandemic population, this is uh, the final <coughs> dendrograms uh, showing that uh, there are not relationship in terms of uh, a single nucleotide substitution between the current population and the old ones. This is just the final uh, outsourcing of uh, calculation. You have to, uh, uh, to state this, you have uh, proved also the contrary, that there are uh, relationship, but it, it was rejected. So with, the, with our work, we established that uh, there are not genetic relationships uh, between these two populations. In other words, uh, is most probably this new population came from abroad, was not the uh, evolution of the old population. The confirmation of this came for another paper, taking into consideration also uh, Chinese uh, strains of this pathogen, and they found, uh, you see, one single nucleotide uh, substitution among uh, Italian strains, and uh, a relatively higher five uh, single nucleotide substitution in the, in the Chinese. This means that the Chinese population is older than, the, than our. And since China is the origin of, uh, of the kiwi fruit, most probably the pathogen originated in, uh, in China. And of course, there are uh, <coughs> displacement of propagative material between countries, uh, uh, as we note, this pathogen can stay into the plant uh, without causing any kind of symptoms for years. So you, in other words, you can introduce latently infected prop propagative material from abroad, cultivate for two, three, four years without any problems, but the pathogen is still there. And when he found uh, this uh, stress factor, it came out and spread very, very, very easily. In fact, from which plant parts it's arrived, there is the Italian hypothesis, the, the Italian hypothesis that say latent infected plant propagative material, science of grafted plant. Kiwi fruit is propagated through uh, science or, or grafting, even though also in, in micro propagated in vitro. The New Zealand hypothesis state the introduction of infected pollen. And this could also be possible because this pathogen uh, survives on the pollen grains, but is, is still not well established. Is uh, from the pollen grains, it can colonize flower or other plant parts, and from there start the epidemics, the infection. And moreover, we didn't uh, intercept at that time in Italy and New Zealand the, the, the sources of uh, infected material. We, we arrived just after the appearance uh, of the, of, the, of the infection. So there are, these are just hypotheses for working. Environmental fitness, we already talked about this, but uh, again, we, which are the, the Pseudomonas syringa tinidia strong points? I just summarize these three because uh, are involved in, in resistance. Copper is, uh, you know, is, uh, is the common way to uh, combat to, to defend plants from, from uh, bacteria. But uh, it, it works only from, uh, let's say, from outside. It's not copper uh, crystals are not uh, 
uh, cannot uh, enter into the plant. Since this bacterium has a, a very strong endophytic lifestyle, you cannot reach by, by, by copper. Moreover, he has copper-resistant genes, so be careful, don't exaggerate with copper treatment. Also, the antibiotic resistance are important. Sacros uptake uh, is, is related to endophytic lifestyles. He has this gene, like other uh, endophytic bacteria, and maybe it's important. And also siderophores. So this uh, starts indicated the strong point of uh, consideration on copper spray. This is much related to the, to the protection of the disease. Uh, just to say that uh, we still know that uh, there are uh, copper resistant genes in the old uh, Pseudomonas sactinidae population. So don't exaggerate uh, with copper. One important uh, thing to, to underline that this is, uh, <coughs> we are interested as a human beings uh, in the, on this aspect, is antibiotic resistance. You see here di different uh, uh, types uh, uh, with which bacteria can uh, uh, face antibiotic. Uh, they have a flux pump uh, uh, like uh, Pseudomonas satinidia. That is to say, the, the antibiotic enters the plant cell, but is pumped out. So it passes through without causing any, any, any damages. There are antibiotic altering enzymes, uh, uh, and there are degrading enzymes. So bacteria has different uh, <coughs> pathways to degrade or, or to eliminate uh, pathways. Why I am insisting on this aspect? Because uh, <coughs> fortunately in Italy uh, the, uh, the utilization of antibiotic as a, a protective measure for protecting crops from bacteria are not allowed since uh, more than 40 years. But uh, this is not the case in other countries. And, and, and we know that the spreading of the resistance of antibiotic through bacteria is very fast. In other words, if uh, a plant pathogenic bacteria has an antibiotic resistance and this bacterium, uh, for some cases, uh, reach or goes in, in contact with uh, uh, microbes infecting us, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Escherichia coli, it can easily transfer this resistance, as we know. So, if you go farther, we have some... Uh, uh, disease caused by, by this strain, and we have to, uh, to uh, have the antibiotic uh, therapy, if we have uh, this uh, gene uh, into this strain, the antibiotic therapy is not effective at all. And this is uh, how fast is the spreading uh, of one single uh, resistance bacterium can, uh, in uh, in environment, uh, where is uh, the, the antibiotic, it can easily over multiplicate and substitute completely the old population and became uh, the most important strain. Okay? And maybe you remember some months ago the, the alarm that uh, has been caused by this uh, Escherichia coli strains found in cucumber. So take Take, start to think if, if, if in this case, this is very important. If we applied antibiotic to this uh, cucumber uh, cultivation and uh, Pseudomonas syringe lac lacrimans is the pathogen affecting uh, the cucumber, acquire the, the antibiotic resistant gene, for some cases, Ischerichia coli can be present in the soil or. or animals in other uh, part, he can acquire these genes and transfer to this E. coli, e. coli strain. After that, uh, in this case, when uh, a, a, a pathogen for human beings is so aggressive, we need uh, an antibiotic therapy. If there is uh, a relationship with our plant pathogenic bacteria, the antibiotic therapy is not working at all. We are finishing. We are already talking about the siderophore. I just to say this because uh, one solution to reduce the danger of this uh, pathogen, 
apart uh, copper spray and other uh, um, compounds, could be that one to uh, eliminate or at least to reduce the effectiveness of this hydrofor. And, and in fact, there are molecules that can uh, reduce the effectiveness of this hydrofor that we are putting some new compounds and that we are see that they are helping in, in preventing the spreading of, uh, of, the, of the pathogen. So if we know the genome of, of, of a strain, we, we know the, the strong, strong points and the weak points, and we can apply, like in this case, a basic uh, strategy to, to overcome these uh, this strong points. This is uh, uh, the capacity of this bacterium to degrade the lignin and phenols. Eh? We already see. The, the, these are some of uh, very nasty uh, syndromes. You see, this is uh, the, um, maybe <coughs> one of the most important phases of the cycle of disease of the bacterium, the winter time. Winter time, no leaf. Uh, Canker formation, this bacterium likes very much uh, low, um, low temperature. It can multiplicate and it can evade, came out from the plants through these exudates. These exudates are a mixture of plant saps and the bacterial cells that uh, wind and rain can transport all over in, uh, for long distance. So in this way, at the, at, the, at the very end point of the uh, vegetative cycle of the plant, represents uh, the way with which the bacterium colonize uh, the new vegetation that is coming in uh, one or two months, because it's spread uh, all over, uh, um, reaching the, the buds. These are uh, <coughs> symptoms uh, that is not possible to see from outside, but uh, these uh, rusty colors uh, indicates a, a very um, aggressive uh, colonization. Here, just to say how is fast uh, the, um, the spreading of the disease. This is, a, you see, is a, a statistic uh, performed from KVH, that is a New Zealand uh, consortium just created uh, for uh, putting uh, knowledge on this disease. Put attention, 12 December 2011, 9 November, roughly 20 days. You see, in 20 days, November, we are in the other hemisphere, means uh, our May, May, March, that is to say, the uh, spring. If you remember, in spring, there are rains, there are new growth, the exudates are already colonized, the buds. In 20 days, you see the line is very right up. That means a lot of uh, new infection. And finally, this was uh, what we have done, uh, multiplication trend uh, similar for uh, the one for biofilm, but uh, choosing uh, different uh, host plant. And we confirm that the new population is, uh, is able to uh, not only um, invade the yellow fleshed kiwi fruit, but also the green one. Because uh, in brackets, but uh, it's important as well, the main problem is not uh, mainly for the yellow one, because uh, if you remember I said that, that uh, it was uh, cultivated for uh, 900, uh, 1,000 hectares. You have taken into consideration that for green uh, fleshed kiwi fruit, there are 25,000 uh, hectares only in Italy. So this population is able to infect and, uh, and uh, cause severe damage also to the green one. And uh, we, confirmed, we, we, we confirmed that uh, the, uh, the new one is, is, is virulent in, in both, in both uh, um, species. In contrast, the, the old uh, population is more devoted and more specialized for the green one. So this is a confirmation of also virulence evolve and is uh, able to colonize a different plant. I am finishing and I thank you uh, 
for your candid attention. <laughs>